Alright you guys, today I am here with pro boxer Cody the Crippler Crowley and we're going to get to all kinds of questions about training, boxing training, he's going to give us some insights, we're going to go in the ring and get into some techniques and tactics and we're also going to talk about the mental side and what it takes to have the determination and focus to really make it successfully as a pro. So first, uh, thanks for yeah, being no, here, man. Yeah, I'm, really I'm excited, it. man. I'm, it's really uh, cool. I'm a fan. I've been watching some of your videos, so. I've been watching some of yours, you know? too, so it's like, it's almost like I know you yeah. and your trainer already. Perfect, perfect. So tell me a bit about your background. Like, let's find out about how you got into boxing, how it got started. Um, so originally, you know, like every other kid in Canada, I was born with hockey skates on my feet. Yeah, I hear um, you. I was, that was my dream, you know? Yeah. I was going to be a professional hockey player. Yeah. Um, just like everyone else. but. It just kind of happened one time where, you know, I slowly started uh, gaining weight, mm -hmm. uh, got teased a little bit in school, you know. Um, my parents and stuff, they didn't really say anything about it, like, oh, you're fat, you need to go work parents out. Parents love you no matter what. Yeah, but, you know, my dad's like, hey, you know, maybe you should try, you know, let's, uh, there's a kickboxing gym down the street. Let's maybe oh, try and... Uh, toughen you up a little bit. Yeah, right. Well, and meanwhile, it's, no, you need to lose some weight. That's, oh, that's really what they were thinking, yeah. right? So you got bullied a little bit. N yeah, not so much bullied, no, nothing physically, but people, what, people you might, yeah, you know, they might stick, it to yeah, stick some stuff here and there, which it's all fun and games, but really, you know, when I went home at night, that kind of stuck to me. Yeah, you I know, know. You do um, feel that. yeah, I was always, you know, put my t-shirt on in the pool, you yeah, know, that you kind of stuff. <laughs> um, I know what you mean, you weren't ready to take it off and be like, hey. Yeah, so, you know, once I started getting into boxing and uh, I lost the weight quick, you know, rapid quick, went from being, you know, a little bit heavier to now I was the elite athlete in, uh, in my elementary school. Oh, you know, cool. I actually got the athlete uh, of the year award one year after my first year of training. Oh um, yeah, only one so year. You the, it yeah, the competitive edge Boxing just turned yeah, competitive thing. edge just came. Boxing gave me that self confidence. Where shoot, how did I just skip for an hour straight. You know, yeah, yeah. like it gave me that I can do this. Yeah. I can and not I can't. That's what kind of got installed in me. So in your when you first started out in boxing, uh, when you talk about your relationships with your coach and you, what was the dynamic like? Because it wasn't you weren't at the world class level yet. So how much were the coaches giving you that pull and, and I'm like how did it all happen where you had that moment where I'm like I gotta get in the gym, I just love this. Well you know what, uh, boxing in, in Peterborough where I'm from, it's not like someone goes and does that and makes a living. No. You know, or really goes and uh, goes to the Olympics or nationals or rare. anything like that. Yeah, very, very rare. So it's more so like a hobby. So that was actually all on me, you know, and the coaches just kept wondering, shoot, he's here again. He's here again. Consistent. He's here again. Yeah, so I just kind of made that uh, made that choice where, you know, I can't get enough. All right, the very first thing that goes through my head is ring position. I can't do nothing to you. I can't land a punch. I can't get inside or nothing if I don't have the proper positioning. Okay. Correct. Cool. Yeah. So, if me and you were in the corner, right? We were going across from each other, right? The bell rings. All of a sudden, we come here, we meet in the middle, okay? Yeah. In my eyes, I'm thinking, okay, where am I in the ring? Ring awareness. Uh, first, yeah. thing, first thing I'm going to do right now is immediately in my brain, I have a picture of the ring, right? I'm going to draw a, a line across the ring and immediately cut it in half. Wow. So right now in my brain, the thought process is, no matter what, you're staying on this half of the ring. Oh yeah. So now I got, now I just, my, my space in the ring is cut in half. You now don't you, worry about all of yeah, that. Yeah, you can only go on this side of the ring now, right? right? So the second you start going over here, boom, I'm over here. Now you go this way, I'm over here. The second part of this process now, as we move, now, now I'm gonna cut that box that I had in half again. Oh, so yeah. now I'm gonna take, deep, when you go this way, I'm gonna take deeper steps over here. Yes. Boom, yes. make you feel uncomfortable, so I might throw a big hook, a big yeah, straight yeah. left hand, you're not gonna go into this Touch hand. me, touch me, go, go. Right, you know, boom. As soon as I start, start throwing big punches, immediately this way. Boom, boom, I might dig, dig a body shot in or something, but ring awareness. Now the second you get a little bit more ahead of me, I cut it sharper. Ah, right? right. Now you have to go that way. Yeah, All right, yes. I cut down half now. Now I can do whatever I want. Right. The best thing, once you have that ring positioning, um, you know that my coach has taught me, is you have to find an opening. 
Not yes. everything's going to be there. No, they're, they're going to be shut down right off the bat. Yeah, you have a lot, of, a lot of coaches that, you know what, all right, as soon as you get them on the ropes, like I got you on the ropes right now, we're going to do a shoe shine or something, right? Right, right, right. And right, come right. back with a big hook. Yeah. The hook's not there. Right, right, right. You're very consistent going in yeah. and just yeah. loving it. Yeah. How about when you got into sparring? How was that for you? Was it tough at first? Did, super, did, super. I would get a little bit nervous. Because you, know? you already had people in the gym who were established. Maybe yeah, boxing. Yeah, did yeah. they lay any heat on you or? Um, yeah, they would. You know, I would have my good days, my bad days. But I think, you know what? I'm going to skip ahead here a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was always nervous sparring until I met Ibn Kaysen, oh. which is my boxing coach. Yes, yes, now yes. Now in, in Las Vegas. Um, even when I first went to him, I would, uh, I would be nervous. You know, I'd be shaking a little bit. But that's always because um, you train so much, right? And then when you go in the ring, it's something totally new. It's an uncomfortable position. Yes. You don't know who you know you're boxing or whatnot. It, everything what was so bring. everything was so new yeah. that you don't really know how to handle the situation. That's right. But now, you know, with my trainer, every single day he puts me in these weird, uncomfortable situations. Oh, he's training you to be uncomfortable. Yes. That now. Shoot, I love sparring because that's the only place where I feel comfortable. Yeah, I see you what know? you're saying. You have to expand yourself and test yourself mentally. You have to get used to being uncomfortable. 100%. That's the same thing, like, I guarantee you that I'm not trying to say anything about the gyms around here or anything, but no. growing up, when I would train for a fight, like get ready for nationals, right? I would spar Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, yeah. the same four or five different guys going yes. hard, thinking I'm in shape, yes. I'm ready to rock, I'm ready to fight. Yeah. Well, I just spent two months at that training camp training for a moment that would feel totally different than those two months that we were training. True, very you true. You know what I mean? Yes, So that's right. now, the way my coach has me training, you know, I don't know where I'm sparring, who I'm sparring or what. I would just pick up that phone and he would say, we're here today at this time. But we, we might not even have sparring set up. We would get to the gym and say, who wants to work? Right. You know? Now we're in a different gym. I don't know these people. I don't know who I'm sparring. Maybe somebody said, no, we're not, no one's sparring at this gym. So we drive to the next gym. Right. Now we get there. All right, you're sparring this? Who? Oh, shoot, it's a world champion. So one of the differences, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. Go yeah. ahead, go ahead. No. So shoot, all right, it's a world champion. I don't know who I'm going to spar. Ah. So a couple days out of the week now, I'm in a new gym that I don't know. I don't know the people around the gym. I have no idea the guy that I'm boxing. Yeah, yeah. I'm in an uncomfortable situation. So that's the thing, one big difference between the amateurs and the pros. And the amateurs, you're in your club, sparring with guys you know, or girls that you know if you're you know, a female boxer. And you can get, even though it's challenging physically, it's like running the same run at the same speed, you can get comfortable. 100%. So now you, your coach is really throwing you in there and you've been sparring some world-class guys. Yeah, I've, like, I've, you know, I've boxed with the best guys. You sparred Mayweather? Boxed Floyd, um, probably, Floyd, probably, you know, almost close to 100 rounds now. 100 I boxed, rounds, whoa. I worked for the Manny Pacquiao fight and the Conor McGregor fight. I boxed oh, yeah? Zab, Zab Judah multiple times. Zab Judah, um, Jorge Linares. Jorge Linares, a couple of his That's... camps. Rancis Bartholomew, a couple of his camps. I went to Russia. Uh, they brought oh, really? me over to spar uh, Edward Troy right, right to the motherland. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I've been, I've been in there with, with the best, Javante Davis. Um, you know, right. Ishe oh, that's Smith. Some world class. Uh, you know, Ishe Smith, that's a tough A, a, tough a, a lot of experienced guys. So I know people out there are going to want to know because I still, I do want to Timothy Bradley. Oh, you sparred Timothy Bradley. I sparred Timothy Bradley for the Manny Pacquiao fight. Wow. Every, everybody that's at the top of the game, I, I've been in the ring with. So there's nothing that. No, you've seen it all. Yeah, I've seen it all. So now I got you here. What I'm gonna do is this is a measure jab. Yes. I'm putting this out here, just measuring, keeping my hand out front, right? Yes. Now I'm doing two things here. I'm finding my distance. Yep. Right? I know if I'm out here and I'm not touching you too far away, yep. right? So, but I know if I'm in too close, you can also counter right. get me, right? So I'm finding my distance, kind of pawing. But another thing I'm doing is I, this is a defense. Okay. If I have something down here, you can't hit me. That's right. I got something straight down the pipe. You can't hit me. That's right. Right? Yeah. So I'm fine. You're using your offense as a defense. Yes. At the same time, though, I have my eyes. I'm looking and observing all around. Whatever. You. I, yeah. Yeah. So I might be here, touch, and then sink down to the body nice. or something. Or I'm touching, I'm coming around to the side, right? Throw straight punches just to sink one to the body, come nice. around. Or I could be over here, 
all of a sudden I see, you see me going for the body. Yeah. So you see me going for the body. Thinking. A lot of fighters though would drop their arm, right? Drop their arm now, and then yes. I come to the head. So there's two questions. So I want to ask you about the Floyd sparring, because I know people out there are going to want to know about that. You've had different types. You had the, some initial sparring where it was like a brawl, and then you had more, I guess later you had maybe more of a technical chance. Tell me about the sparring experience with Floyd Mayweather. Uh, you know, very first time that I boxed Floyd, um, the moment he said, you know, Canada, you're up, you're in the ring. Canada. Uh, yeah, because, you know, I'm the only white boy in the gym, obviously, you know. Um, That's right. So I definitely stand out, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then me being from Canada, um, you know, they just know I'm a tough, durable guy. You know, boxing IQ and boxing skill, probably not there. He's from Canada. They're assuming. Yeah, you know. Um, then we went in the ring and, you know. Uh, he brought oh, it. I, yeah, he brought it to me. He was trying to kill me. You know, yeah. he was trying to knock he me really out. He really was. That, that camp, he, he knocked out six out of eight spawn partners. He's trying to stop you. Every single day. Whoa. That Because that fight with Pacquiao, you know, it was supposed to be a war. So he was prepping in case Pacquiao, you know, is as good as, you know. As they were saying as, he is. Yeah. Um, were, he's ready for it, you know. Yes. So he was coming in every day going to war with these guys. You know, me and one other guy were the only guys that he didn't So stop. you're in there with the best in the world and he's bringing the heat. And he's so bringing he's the bringing heat. he's bringing it almost like the way he brought it to McGregor where he pressed yeah, forward. Yeah, 100%. So, um, you know, after probably like, you know, five or six, five or six rounds, uh, I was extremely exhausted yeah. more so from the people banging on the ring screaming at me um you really the had entourage. that sort of rally people more. telling me right to my face you're getting knocked out you know you got Whoa. nothing screaming Whoa. at you and then obviously thinking in your mind well this is the best fighter in the world is this gonna happen yeah, yeah. I, I was it was so surreal to me right um then that, that, that just totally gassed me. I had absolutely nothing left, of course. But you still with, spent five, six, three rounds in there. Uh, we went 10 rounds straight. Oh, what? 10 rounds straight. After that, uh, when he realized, you know, I'm still there, he just kind of dropped down, got out of the ring and rolled out. So I think wow. that's when he uh, realized that, you know, this kid's just a hard working individual that so, won't quit. So when you're in the rings, because I mean, every day somebody's out there sparring, they're getting in a heated sparring session at a new gym, or if they're new and they're sparring against that pro and they're bringing the heat, how did you adapt to that? How did you deal with that? Because I'm sure it's happened more than once. You must have sparred somebody else who brought it. How, could, how do you get through that? Or what advice also do you have for someone who's trying to get through that kind of situation? Do it every day. Do it every day. Put yourself in that uncomfortable situation every day. This wasn't my first time being in a situation where I was under pressure. Yes, that's you know? right. So that's why thought, you, you have to go and work with the best every single day. I'm not saying go in there and have gym wars every single day. Right. But you need to be working with different people, different, you know, learning stuff from different trainers, picking it Make up. Make yourself uncomfortable. Make yourself uncomfortable. In order to fight a bigger guy, you have to come on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And basically what I would do with that is trying to get under the fighter. Right. But one thing that fighters do is when they come in, they're... Oh, they're, they're all balanced. They're falling over like that, right? Yeah, They yeah. don't have their feet under them. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So as I'm coming in with you, every every time I take a step, boom, 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 look at my feet, I'm right here, boom. Yeah, you're bringing boom, your whole self with you, boom. Right? Yes, nice. I'm not just coming in like this. And rushing. Right. And then you can get, and then the guy can step out and work you. Yeah, no, as I'm stepping forward, I step and dip. Dip, 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 dip. Yes. So, and you're avoiding jabs as they're coming in. Like, so if you're, if I'm trying to catch you, boom, 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 right there, you know? But main thing is my feet are under me. Yeah. I can throw with power from any position. Whether, because I step properly, whether I step this way, if I see an opening, I come under. Yes. When I step this way, if I see an opening, I can come under. Sure. When you were transitioning from the amateurs to the pro, it was a bit of a struggle at first. You had the, you had the, you're like a block. For sure, play. It, did, it, it didn't happen overnight, and that's actually when I quit boxing. Right. I hit a wall. You did. You know, when I first moved. So you to, had a rough moment too, where you thought maybe this is it for me. Yeah, for sure. Uh, as soon as I graduated high school, I already knew, you know, I'm going to be a professional fighter. I made that way. I had a one-way ticket. I went to Las Vegas. That's the fight capital of the world. If I'm going to make it anywhere, if I, if I want to be a pro fighter, I'm going. That I'm gonna be a professional fighter and I wanna be the best, but I lack most the the skill, the technique. All I have is two hands, a good harding beat, and right. a will to not quit, right? Right, right, right. So let's give myself the best chance as possible. So that happened. Let's go to the fight capital. After you, so after you had that quit, there was a lull there. Yeah, and well, then you came out of it. 
Yeah, so I went to Vegas. I tried for, you know, a good six months. Well, you did. I tried. Oh, I got beat down every single day. By right? boxers and By bo um, boxers and trying, yeah, trying to find fights, trying to make a pro debut. Um, I just wasn't getting anywhere. And it got to the point where, you know, after multiple phone calls home to my parents saying, I'm, this is it, I tap out, I'm done. I finally did tap out. I moved back home, you know? That's where I went and my life totally just snowballed then. And that's where, you know, um, my, my, my food addiction came in. You know, I gained, I went up to 220 pounds. Wow. Um, I didn't train. From fighting at 160. Yeah, I didn't train, I didn't have a job, I didn't have school, nothing. Um, until finally, I made that, uh, that moment again where, you know, I said, what am I gonna do with myself? So you really went and gave it a go. And you were already and a success, a you were a successful amateur. Uh, went you know went to nationals or won nationals, yeah. um, and you know gold and then a couple silver, and uh, we're on the national team. You, know, you had a great successful amateur record, and thinking that okay, the program is just gonna come to me. Or yeah, you yeah. Well, no, I was not lied to, but I was hyped. Well, no, uh, that's not really the right. No, word. I wasn't lied to. I was just. Like, uh, it was a misconception what that boxing game actually was. The pro game. The pro game, due to how sheltered we are in Canada yes, from boxing. That's right. They're, you think if you're going to be good here, it's going to be easy when you go yes, out there. Not knowing that, you know, Canada isn't known for boxing at all. No. no you know, no. we don't have the right uh, trainers, the no. sparring partners, the no. gyms. We just don't have the resources. So when I went there, it was a totally different ball game. So there's fighters around the world, uh, in the States, and wherever, in the UK, Australia, and all around the world, and they may be in a situation like you where they don't have, they want to become pro, but they don't have the best setup right now. Yeah. It, okay, what can they do now to make sure that they're ready? And then is moving to Vegas... The, the best end? thing that I would recommend to anybody is find a game plan first, okay? The second time I went back to Vegas, that's what I did. I had a game plan. Boxing game plan or a strategy to a pro? It was a boxing game plan, yeah. okay? I was going to, I moved there, um, you know, three or three, it's, it's, we're in our fourth year right now, okay? Yeah. I moved there just as I was turning 21, okay? Right. I had a five year short term goal, Yes. okay? That is, oh, it's a short term and long term, but I was gonna move to Las Vegas, put myself in the fight capital of the world, with unlimited resources, right? Wow. I was gonna turn professional. Cool. I was gonna get signed to a big time promotional company. Nice. I was gonna have four fights a year within Pretty the- consistent. Yeah, and then from, so from year one to year five, I was gonna have four, and then four fights a year, win a world title wow. with the, within my fifth year, so before my sixth year. Yes. That's my five year plan. So far, I, I moved there right when I turned 21, okay? Yeah. I had, I moved to Vegas, found myself the best possible coach in the world, Ibn Kaysen. Nice. The guy is a complete genius. Nice. He's, he's turning me, he turning basically a piece of mud or a rock into a diamond, nice. okay? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I found a management team, okay? Yes. Um, I got signed to a major promotional company, Top Rank, one of the biggest in the world. Little did I realize, I'm a small fish in a very, very big pond. Right. Right. They got a big and, pool to choose yeah, from. Yeah, and you know what? My, me and my coach decided, you know what? You have the potential, but your skill level's not there yet. You know, you're really just starting to train. A key thing that a lot of fighters do is when they're going to the body or attacking, they're not directing their energy the proper way. Okay. By me saying that is, let's say if you were on the ropes, right? And I'm going for this lead shot to the body, okay? Yes. Where nine times out of 10, fighters go around and they go like this. Oh, right? right. Whether yeah. they slap or what, but at, anyway, their energy is shooting off and going a different direction. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you think the straight left or the straight right hand is the most powerful punch? It goes right When they throw it, all this energy, this is a complete straight line, yeah. right? So all the energy is going into one area. Yeah. We wanna, maximize the energy so we want to do the exact same thing when we go to the body right yes right I see. so in order to do that you have to get an angle and have your arm positioned properly gotcha so i can't just go down what you see most guys doing where they're down here and they usually scoop it up like this they're looping they're looping their shots mostly yeah. right yeah so what i would do is i would create an angle in order to do that 
it is an offense and defense. I'm creating an angle. Now, you know, I'm off to the side, yes. right? But what I'm doing with this arm as I create the angle, I drop this arm a little bit and I'd be hitting right here, but yeah. what I'm doing, yeah, I'm going, going straight, straight through. through. You're, Boom. you're spearing me. Yes. Almost like I'm lifting. Yes, yeah. and that's what you see, see me do with my left Because if you hand. didn't, you would, you would just cut off. Well, most people go, bah, 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 like this, right. right? So their energy, it bounces off and goes everywhere. Yeah. So what's next for you? What's coming up in the next short well, little while? So to go, well, to go back to that five-year plan, yeah, yeah. you know, went pro, big promotion company, all within, you know, the five years. Now I started my own promotional company. Yes. Um, you know, um, I've been kind of staying on that four fights a year. Last year I only had three. I Still. had some other reasons come up, yeah. um, but with the new business and everything too. Yeah. So, um, you know, four fights this year should put me at 17 and no to, to cap off my fourth year. Right, right now you're at 13 and no. Yeah, 13 and no. This will be my fourth year. And going into my fifth year, I said from one to five, I'm gonna turn pro and win a world title. Wow. You know, I have, after this year, this year I want to be put in, you know, top 15 rankings in the world. Yes. And then next year, going into 2019, capture a world title by the end of 2019. Um, if I came to Ibn Kaysen, you know, three years ago, and I said, coach, train me, I'm turning professional, and within five years I'm going to win a world title. <laughs> he probably would have laughed, just right. walked away. Right. By, no means, so really by, no, by no means are we close to that but we're making progress. You're still, the trajectory you know, is yeah, going. It's, it's gotta say something. I'm working with the best fighters in the world. I'm undefeated. I got my own promotional company. I'm headlining fights, I'm selling out fights, I'm promoting those fights. Yeah, tell me, so what's the name of your promotional company? Uh, Triple C Boxing. Triple C Boxing, yeah. what's the, what's it's, the it website? It stands for uh, Cody, Cody the Crippler Crowley Cody the Promotions. Cody the Crowley Promotions, Triple um, so C Boxing. So CCC Boxing, yeah. Uh, so triple C boxing. Triple C boxing. Dot, dot ca. Dot ca. Dot ca. Triple C ca. boxing. Dot ca. I'm gonna leave a link in the video. Yeah, yeah that's my website. You know, uh, photos, videos, countdowns to my next fight. Um, it's got all your stuff coming. Yeah, up. Info, info to buy tickets uh, for the next. So event. if you guys are in the area and you want to go check out his fights, you got you got a fight coming up. May May fifth. Uh, it's gonna be a great fight for Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, right yeah. On, right well, on. I'm calling I'm calling this uh, Cody Crowley Cinco de Mayo. Right. You know? C C C like Cinco de Mayo. C C Cinco. Um, <laughs> But this is, a, this is a great fight for b the boxing scene in Canada. Yeah. You got two of uh, Canada's top prospects coming up, and you know they're going to uh, put it all on the line to fight each other. You, the opponent you're fighting? Uh, Kevin Higson. Kevin Higson. Kevin Higson. Um, right on, he right was on. Uh, he's 14 to one right now, so right. we got pretty so this similar is a records. Yeah, yeah. This is a good step up. Yeah. I'm not going to call him a stepping stone. I'm going to no. call him a step up. Of course, of course. Yeah, your mind is always on doing the right thing. So you got your coach here with you today. Yep. Before we go in the ring, I think what we'll do is, if it's all right, we'll get him in here to give uh, us some of his insight on how to help boxers out there in the game. What do you think about that? Yeah, for sure. All right, Ibn, if you don't mind, yeah, come and share you. some of your insights. All, all right, sir. All right, thanks. It's great to have you here. Well, um, so yeah, we were talking earlier about some of the progress that Cody made from going from the amateurs to the pro and then while he's in the pro game. So you obviously are a part of that, that whole evolution. So if you can share some insight. Let's say you're gonna take an amateur fighter right now and they have the dedication. How can you make those adjustments? How can you help change them? Well, you mean if I'm gonna take an amateur fighter to Vegas and, and or just from here? Let's, let's say you got someone in Vegas, like no, no pro fights. Right. Top amateur. Well, Depends on the skill. Yeah, it, it all, everything is you know on a case-by-case -case basis, so you have to see what they bring to the table. Everybody has their own different attributes that they bring. Yeah. And, um, and then what I would do as a coach is I would just see what it is, that, what is his best attributes. Then I would see what his worst attributes are. Right. And then what I do is I kind of shy away from the good things and just work strictly on the bad things or oh. things that he does not do well because the things that he do good is all, most of the times is already natural. Yes. I don't got to hone that. I don't got to spend time you, working on that. You want to eliminate the weaknesses. Yeah, that, that's it. The, the, the stress will take care of themselves. The yeah. weaknesses is what we need to, to work on. I mean, even in, in sparring, you know, a lot of times people want to go into sparring and they want to just look good and just do what they do. They want to bring their A game every yeah, time. every single time. They don't want to work on anything. They're not working on, on, the, on the weaknesses. In sparring, <laughs> unless you're Floyd Mayweather, in sparring, you should be looking bad, except for on certain occasions when I you're going there to, to, to get confidence for a fighter. It's like, like old that. Ali tapes, how he used to just take beatings yeah, in the you, ring. You, you've got, you have to work. If you're not working on the bad things and the negative things, then, and then when you go to the fight, then you bring your A game. 
Right. Then you bring the best of what you can bring. But what you want to do is eventually bring your C and your B game all the way up to your A game so everything is an A game. Yes. That's yeah. ideal That's right. what you have to be. Yeah, um, a common mistake of amateurs or professionals, when they make that slip, I'll go with him, when they make that slip down, and then they throw the punch, they come back up as they throw the punch. Ah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They come right back up into the line of, uh, of power. So what you need to do is, when you throw that slip and throw that punch, try to stay on that same part. On that same same yeah, angle, and rotate. so that way you're not coming back up into something, and then co kind of grab your hand right here, on your chin, on the chin, to so yeah, protect from the left. In case hook. I'm coming with the left, in, as in case you're coming with the left here, hook. right, Boom. right, exactly. Yeah. So you kind of want to, so you kind of want to just stay down and stay down there and throw the punch, boom, instead of coming back up with the punch right back to the center. Yeah. Because you right. slip working from that right. dip, right, working from that right from that same angle. Yeah. That's just yes. one of the mistakes that I see a lot of pros make. And yeah. they get clipped with a left hook coming back up. Yeah, they're coming right into the shot. Right back up. They, the uppercut isn't going to match it. Right. It's not right. That uppercut is not as good as that left hook that they, they're not even seeing. Yeah. So that's I, right. They're not even seeing it. So I just like to, just to make that clear. That's a common mistake that amateurs and professionals make. Then another small thing that he does is when he's coming, he takes his hand right here because he knows what you're more, more than likely going to do is come with a straight punch and it's right there for extra protection. Right, right, so right. So he'll, he'll look up, he'll jab in, step in, He'll jab in, and then he'll then he'll step back and right to the same haven. Yes. So now he and now he has good positioning again, right back. Yes, yes. Yeah. What what are some of the common weaknesses that you see? Like you know, it's usually it's footwork or head movement, or somebody's all offense and no defense. What kind of what are some of the more common ones that you might have to, to work with? Okay, um, I, I, how about I put it like this: the 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 most basic um, thing that is wrong with every fighter that has a problem, most is they don't think. Okay, and the reason why I say that is, uh, you, it is no right and there's no wrong. I mean, when Floyd Mayweather started doing a shoulder roll, that, I mean, that was wrong. Now you have people uh, switching up from right, self part, right handed, you, you, people boxing lateral movements. What's right is what's working. What's wrong yeah. is what's not working, right? I got you. So if you're going to, if you throw a punch like this, right. okay, and it lands, then throw the punch like that again if it's gonna <laughs> land. If you throw a punch, a straight jab like this, and you get counted with a right hand, then you might not throw that punch again like yes, that. Maybe you might, right. you know, and then sometimes you gotta depend, you know, depends if, they, if it was an accident. Or, but that all goes back to what you have to do is think. You have to be reflecting on your performance. Constantly it's like thinking. On, on the spot and then afterwards. Look, you see Madonna, you see Mayoga, you see these people that, you know. That you, brawl. That you, well, you think they're brawling. Yeah, but yeah. But what they're doing is they're thinking about what's going on. And they don't I know, you. they don't have the fundamentally sound proper way of throwing a punch. But because they're using their brain, they know how to land whatever punch it is they're going to throw. Right. Whether it's a chop like this. That's how it's, it's like that. my organ could take down Forrest. Right, you know exactly. I mean? Yeah, yeah with the double fights. right hand, it's just yeah. swinging it like crazy. But, the, but these guys, you know you know who gave me a healthy a healthy understanding of that? I had um, a guy, one of my fighters was uh, sparring Marcus Madonna. Oh, yeah. And I used to think Marcus Madonna was just a wild fighter. Right. Until my guy went in there sparring, and I saw the way he was setting my guy up. Oh, yeah. And it looked like it was wild, but I realized he was thinking every single time he did everything he did, it was a thought process to it. Right. And right, that's right. what, it, even when he was asking Cody earlier about the, what can these guys do. Okay, if you don't know how to throw a proper punch, then just go to the ring, you spar. If you get hit, okay, you, need, you know when you go back, don't do that again. <laughs> Change that up. Change Every single time you go in there, think, how could I not get hit and how can I put my hands on that person? And yes. just keep tweaking it as best as possible. If you have that mentality, then that's one way you can still progress even without a coach. So the best the best fighters out there, are the ones who are going to be successful, will you be able to think and adapt in the situation? But I think some fighters are going to adapt quicker than others. All right. Well, those are the best fighters. Those are, Those they're are gonna, the best fighters. They adapt yeah. quickly. Right. Yeah. How about how about in the long run? Let's say how patient do you as a coach need to be with a fighter? I, I guess it depends on how dedicated they are. Well, I get, how, how about this? When Cody came to me, as you said, he I, I really didn't think he had any skill whatsoever, which right. he didn't in my in my, in my <laughs> opinion. Um, and I didn't see I didn't foresee him being <laughs> to the level that he is right now. Yeah. But so. I, 
it was just his it, it was his tenacity it was it was the fact that he was a good human being that i liked i liked yeah, him I liked yeah it has to be the heart him. there yeah. Good, yeah so i don't want to it's not a time limit that i will put on it you know if you like somebody you want to work with them work with them if you cool. don't, it's you know, been three years and we're still working on it yeah, we, it's, we still, still only make 30 percent where i want to be uh yes a, a progress you know he still has so many things that i'm screaming at him in the gym getting irritated like i'm like man what's wrong with you <laughs> come on cody i mean i'm teaching you this we've been going over this forever now i mean it's one particular thing i'm not gonna say all right yeah he, no, no no he knows what it is yeah. but he hasn't gotten this right in three years <laughs> and certain <laughs> fighters certain fighters don't even need to be told that like you some certain, fighters will see it not even like certain amateurs will see it like oh just, some like, fighters they just they, 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 they just do this one thing it's, just, it's instinct it's instinct for them like some people just oh do it's it an in, yeah it's an instinctive right? thing because sometimes but, you might have an instinct to do this or yeah whatever. Some, sometimes you might have an instinct to catch a punch or whatever or throw yeah. away, or shoulder or that might be your natural instinct yeah yeah, yeah. If a lot of people do this naturally, I've been trying to get this guy to do this for three years and he still does not do this and it bothers me. So the relationship is, is important as long as most of it is going well, yeah. then you can still, you know, you're yeah. always carving away. But you, you're not God. You don't know what's going to happen in the yeah, future. That's you true. You know who's going to be what. Somebody can look like a million bucks and get knocked out. Somebody can look like God. That's true. And that's become true. a champion. You could be a front runner or yeah, someone yeah, just I mean, looking flashy. Hopkins lost his first fight. I'm sure they thought he was a bum. True, yeah, right? very look, true. Look, look and then he, he turns around. Right, look at what he did. Or you get some who look great, but it just doesn't happen for them. It just doesn't you know? happen. For they them. can't handle the heat. You can't handle. It. How, how do you get your fighter to adjust in the fight? What's going on there? Like, are, are you saying a lot, or do you just need to be quiet and say one thing? You know, you see coaches with different kind of styles. For me, again, it's a think it's man's game. So what I look at is, it depends on who the fighter is. Will depend on how much I will regurgitate on them. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Right. Some fighters, I, I might get in the corner and not say but one thing. I know they can't handle but one thing. Right. Other fighters that I've been working with for a long time, if I know they know what I can, I can get to this point, that point, this point. All right, correct. Yeah, oh yeah. Correct this, correct that, because I know he can handle it, and I've seen him in action be able to digest what I'm telling him in the corner. If yeah. I got a fighter that's more one-dimensional, then I might just stick to the basic thing that he's doing wrong, yeah. correct that really quick, and just hammer that in the whole minute in the in the so corner. So you got to know your fighter, you whether, know the fighter. whether they're adaptable. That's why I don't yeah. like jumping to other people's corners that I haven't worked with. Yeah, that's right. Because I don't know, know what, what kind of. I don't even know what to tell you if you know how to do what I'm gonna tell you to do. If I tell no. you to go on the inside, you don't know how to get in the inside. And I tell you go in there, then, you then they're gonna get opened up. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that all. It all is, again, it goes back to your brain. It's all. It's a thinking man game. You always have a plan. And you may, you execute your plan, does not mean you, you're not going to get hit. It, just because you get hit doesn't mean you're not doing the right thing. You understand? Good point, good you, point. You, if, if you have to come up with the best strategy or the best tactic that's going to get you the best results, knowing that there is a percentage of failure in that tactic. Because every tactic has a percentage of failure. Absolutely. You, you open yourself up. You just pick the tactic that has the highest percentage or chance of success. And once you've picked that tactic, you don't abandon it. You keep, you keep it in play, you keep it in play. If you know you're fighting a tall guy and you have to get inside on a tall guy and you start trying to move your head to get in and he jabs you a couple times, that don't mean you sit back outside and just wait around and start thinking because now you're at more of a disadvantage because he's got longer arms than you, he's jabbing you on the outside. That's right. Let's, let's do, let's just do 30 seconds where I move around with you and you just throw light punches at me. Okay. Yeah. Just for fun. Do you actually punch? What's no, that? no, I'll take it easy. <laughs> First Italian here. Right here. Wow. 
Yeah, I like it, I like that. You're just finding them, and then you push that one. Oh. <laughs> oh man, I really appreciate that. <laughs>